There was a time many people still living can remember, a time when all personal financial transactions were hand recorded and the idea of an ATM was alien. But in less than 100 years, we've created a world where money as a physical entity is almost obsolete, and transaction records are held on chips inside servers many will never see. In this world, the consumer decides. This world works on reward, and information is power. But how did we get here? Perhaps it's time to look at where we have come from to see where we will go. In the 19th century, passbooks were the way in which banks recorded transaction histories. Every single movement of a client's money was entered into a passport-sized ledger and stamped and dated by a teller. In the 21st century, some countries still integrate the passbook system. In the year 1950, Ralph Schneider and Frank McNamara invented the concept of paying merchants with a single card that consolidates all others. They invented what we know as the credit card. Money had begun its move from paper to plastic. In the late 1980s, banks in the UK were looking for a way to reduce the costs involved in processing checks. This need to streamline processes gave rise to the debit card, almost entirely eliminating the need to ever physically carry currency. In the year 1997, an agreement was reached between several international airlines to join forces and create a loyalty program, rewarding passengers with extra miles for their miles already traveled. Named Star Alliance, it soon became the world's largest and most awarded airline alliance. In the late 1990s and early part of the 21st century, the Internet had shifted the parameters of personal financial management. These were the years that may really have been the beginning. This was the time that saw the online community begin to embrace Internet and mobile banking as daily transaction solutions. In the year 2005, the online peer-to-peer -peer social lending site Zopa was launched. Potential members submitted to a series of background checks before membership was granted. The site linked legitimate lenders and borrowers, matched according to their specific needs, and quickly gained a following. The site's selling point was that it allowed for the removal of bank involvement, and that social lending itself maintained a more human element. The era of social banking, operating on organized digital platforms, had arrived. In the year 2006, South African Airways joined Star Alliance. In the year 2007, search engine giant Google applied for a banking license with the City of London, a fact that went almost unnoticed by most of the world's financial institutions. By this stage, Google had already made clear their intention to be the world's owner and organizer of information, and this was the next clear step. Later that same year, Visa launched the MicroTag, small infrared keyring devices which allowed the user to pay for items under $25 without making contact to anything. These devices soon replaced the need for small change and became the most common means of paying for daily items such as bread and milk. In the year 2008, a South African cell phone network launched the technology that allowed contract members to swap money with other account holders. The popularity of the initiative soon saw it become available to prepaid customers as well. In the same year, Star Alliance opened up its network to partners from other industries to add value to the rewards already on their loyalty program. In the year 2009, Google's banking license was granted. Years of competing with other internet payment companies such as PayPal via initiatives such as Google Wallet were put to a decisive end by a system that offered credit and banking services to the global population with no banking charges. Instead, Google was able to stream correlated advertising directly into stores where their clients were spending. At the same time, First National Bank, having recently changed their name to FNB, joined Star Alliance a decision based on FNB's success with their award-winning e program. FNB was the first bank to take advantage of Star Alliance's invitation to other industries, 
allowing points to be earned from all banking transactions. In the year 2010, the levels of online interaction continued to rise, although the developing world still had communities with restricted access. To counter this, FMB created new social banking networks, successfully using their own influence and brand recognition in the third world to launch the first smaller niche organizations. The purpose of these niche branches was to control and oversee peer-to-peer -peer lending. Since the introduction of Zopa, the participation in social banking had only grown. Research conducted for FMB revealed that in rural communities, social banking was now the most popular form of getting credit. As the first African bank to recognize the opportunity of social banking, FMB gained crucial market share as others scrambled to follow their groundbreaking example. In the year 2011, Banque Sans Frontières is the concept embraced by the financial community and spearheaded by the members of the Star Alliance. Improved security had meant a continuous rise in online banking activity, inspiring banks to rethink their strategy. Banks soon took part in applying pressure to world governments to relax international laws governing the movement of money, helping them achieve a global customer base. Despite this, Physical branches with tellers and consultants, reassuringly, remained. The convenience of mobile digital banking was unable to replace the security of face-to-face -face contact. In the year 2013, Google Bank merged with Star Alliance, creating a now unstoppable marketing and loyalty program. Members were now able to earn e-bucks by simply performing ordinary daily tasks. These included everything from flying to surfing the net and buying products on partnered websites. E-bucks now became redeemable through more avenues than ever before. The public embrace of the system meant that for the first time, loyalty expenditure overtook cash expenditure, and e-bucks became the most powerful currency on the planet. By the year 2015, the world's banks had shifted focus concluding that they were not guardians of money because they were in fact merely custodians of information. This concept began a revolution in the financial sector, with banks re-examining their role in the financial community and finally changing the way they thought about customers and how they related to them. Customerization became key to survival. The conventional wisdom of increasing sales by adding more products was abolished. Instead, banks chose to restructure by simplifying offerings and focusing on key niche services. Here we are today. The new face of banking is to connect people with banking transactions, to oversee the communications between people. They hold different responsibilities. The relationship between bank and consumer is more symbiotic than at any other time. Fear of the future and changing roles has morphed into innovation and a collaboration that has ensured survival. Technology has not replaced the human touch, and it has not eliminated the need for interaction. It has only made it easier to get to the right person faster. This future is closer than you think. This future is better than you imagine.